My name is Rupert, nice to meet you all. Before you go, I've got to go over a little bit of health and safety. Please stay seated at all times, no arms outside the boat, and no recording on handheld devices while we are in motion. When you see this one, this is a 360 signal, so both hands on the rail in front of you. Place your feet into the ground, we want to make sure you guys are nice and secure. Cool. Hmm? Is there any back problems, pregnancies, medical issues? No. Left hand side underneath the feet we've got some first aid kits. Uh, also left hand side of me now I've got a fire extinguisher and a radio. Apart from that, it's about us. For you guys, just sit back, relax, enjoy the scenery. When you see this one, hold on. And with the smaller kids, just keep the heads away from the bar, okay?
Yep, yep. Yeah, okay. So, we have come to the halfway point. We are about seven kilometers downstream from where we started, and we've been averaging around that 60, 65 k an hour mark. So for us, top speed is around 85, 90. These boats can do about that with this, they're like, full laden, yeah, 90. If it was all adults, you're gonna be struggling, but with kids in the mix of it, it's, it's pretty easy. And then if this boat's empty, it's still only getting up to like 95. We haven't got enough room to really open them up. Uh, there's only one boat that can really go 100 consistently, and that's the newer mm. one that's got different engines. But for us, we can't go any lower. We have, well, there's a sign that we turned around at, and that pretty much tells anyone downstream that they can't come up this way, but it does also mean we can't go down that way as well. We have sole use of this throughout the day. We are very fortunate. If we didn't have it, it would be very hard to do what we do. Uh, we, wouldn't be able to go as, we wouldn't be able to go anywhere near as fast or do the spins where we do them or even go to close to the rocks because we we'll expect to meet people. But that's not the case. We are very, very fortunate to be here by ourselves. Uh, is there any questions? Shall we carry on? Yeah. Yep. Okay.
second to last stop for us. We're going to be waiting here for a couple of minutes. We've got uh, Pete coming downstream in a boat, then we can head on up to that last location. While we're here, I'm just going to rattle off a little bit of info about the boat itself so you have a bit of an understanding of what we've actually been on today. So underneath the back row, we have two Chevy V8s powering us. They are 350 <laughs> horsepower each engine, and they're accompanied by two Hamilton jet units, which blast out about 400 liters of water per second each. The way it all works, so there's two intakes underneath the back row. They suck up water into the units. Units create all that pressure, then out the back end through two nozzles. Two nozzles like this, they're moving in sync like this together, and that's what gives us power and also steering. For me, I just have a steering wheel. Boat all clear, uh, big, big. I have a steering wheel and a foot pedal. It's the only thing I'm using in a trip. Once I come to a standstill, though, I can, use, I can use these independent levers here underneath me, and they put a bucket over each nozzle. Well, if I want them to, I can just do one on one if I want to, two on both, it doesn't matter. Uh, but that is what gives me the ability to move this nose around in the back end to get up onto these rocks and stuff like that. But if I was to pull these buckets at full speed, it'd be pretty messy. It would bury the nose and we'd get absolutely drenched and maybe flip the boat, which we don't want. Uh, and then probably the only other thing to mention is the hull. So, a bit of a V on the nose, cuts through the smaller waves, does absolutely nothing on the bigger stuff though. And the water comes underneath us, gets trapped between the chines, which are on the sides. That creates a vacuum underneath where we're all sat, which then gives us lift, gets us up onto that plane. Once we're on the plane, we can go as low as 10 centimeters of water depth. If we're not on the plane, we'll be hitting rocks, picking up sand, left, right, and center. It'll be pretty terrible. Uh, but being on the plane and having a flat bottom hull means we can spin the boats. If we did not have both of those two aspects working together, they probably wouldn't come around as good as they do. Uh, and it just comes to, comes down to drag. Drag can change in water depth as well. So we may think we're all good and then high water comes up, you spin in a different spot and you're going deep to deep instead of shallow to deep. It makes a whole lot of difference just because of the drag itself. But these boats are made to spin in. Compromise a little bit of handling, but spin's way good than the rest of the stuff to be fair. Right, I've just rambled on for a bit. Any questions? <laughs> all good? Okay. There's another boat coming, I'm pretty sure. They shouldn't be too far away. Once they have gone past us, we can get straight out of here. Has anyone been here before? No, no, no. new to it. Yeah, cool. So, can I ask, how many boats are going for the shot over, like, at a... At a, at a time. Almost at time, yeah. Like, yeah, so four. So, okay. two leave the jetty every 15 minutes, so it's a half an hour trip. Uh, would, I don't think they've ever ran more than that. It's just logistically very difficult to herd all the people onto the boats and also three boats following it's just hectic yeah cool good to go yeah. uh, route to the beach see the two boats
So this place is called the tunnel. Left hand side above the rock step, you've got the exit of a 170 meter long man-made tunnel, which was built back in the early 1900s to divert this stretch of water in front of us. They built it, uh, they built it, they mined, realized they weren't the first people there and then broke about even by the time they did all the digging and then the mining. But about $60 million worth of gold has been taken out of this stretch alone. And this river is the second richest gold bearing river in the world. That is second place to the Yukon. You'd still find gold in here. If you went and bought a gold band tomorrow though, you'd probably break even by the time you leave. Uh, and it would take a whole lot longer than what you probably expect. But people still do do it. It's real cool and like a nice day if you find a good spot, but yeah, it's a hobby, not a career, that's for sure. We are gonna spin around, head on home now. Are we all good to carry on? Is there any final questions? Now we nope, all good? No. Nope.